as soon as I put the video up on YouTube, we started having comments from people who were really excited about the project. Um, we've had some really interesting leads on things that can help us, which is fantastic because if some people have already done part of the thinking, then it's pointless us doing that thinking as well. So we've had some great stuff sent through, some great support, um, and I'm really excited that we could actually potentially make something that other people could print themselves, you know, that could be recreatable by people if they have the same condition and the same problem. I think that would be really useful. Hey, so we're at the National Theatre uh, because it's next to, to where I work at IBM and we came up with a really great breakthrough which involves basically trying to 3D print components that almost look like vertebrae and it was inspired by a video that was sent to us on, on Twitter by a man named Ross that Emma can link to and I've reached out to the designer responsible for the brace that's shown in that video so I'm hoping that we can connect with her and get some ideas and some direction from, from her as well and all the things that she learned. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we're, we're out in the sun, we've got some beer, oh and this is a, a portable battery for something else that, that I'm working on, um, in the true spirit of innovation. So uh, stay tuned, hopefully we'll be able to actually do some printing this weekend based on this vertebrae concept. So we'll see how it pans out uh, once once Joe actually starts to do the CAD design because he's the, he's the CAD design genius behind this whole crazy operation. I just wanted to share something my physio sent over actually. It's quite an interesting graphic. So basically this is around sort of using your mobile phone and the fact that actually when your head is forward looking at your phone the weight on your neck is greater on your spine and your neck is greater um, and I think that can actually be said for the situation that I'm in as well that actually the reason I struggle to pull my head up is the fact that it's so low and um, so actually the weight of it is greater so I would say I'm probably around the sort of 60 one between the 45 to 61 which means my weight of my head is greater so 49 pounds to 60 pounds which is kind of similar to what Lindsay weighed me as the other day actually if my head was straighter so if I was kind of in the straighter category it would be almost half the weight to pull it up um so I feel like if we can get this bracing sorted so my head is actually naturally a little higher then the weight will be easier to pull up from and I can actually do exercises from it if that makes sense so actually the opportunity to get straight up is increased by my neck being put slightly up if that makes sense so I think anything we can do with this brace that gets my head past that point of just being too heavy to lift I can lift it with my hand but I can't lift it with my own neck but if we could get it to almost like there then I could pull back from it myself I reckon with a bit of practice <laughs> don't know whether I'm talking bollocks but I think this chart is kind of helping me to kind of see why it's so difficult to pull my head back sometimes because actually I feel stupid for not being able to do it because I think well you know it's your head you should be able to lift it but it just it's incredibly heavy and it's just more than my neck can actually handle Hello. <laughs> uh, here, I'll bring up just so Joe can see what we're talking about because I haven't shown Joe yet. This is what uh, I sent to Emma. Oh, I've not seen this one yet. Yeah. That looks kind of like similar to all the ideas that we've been That's discussing. That's what we've been discussing. And I, think, I think the actual the stability of it looked really good. Um, and sort of like the structure in the neck and stuff and like I'm just gonna bring it up. Um, I thought the sort of the, the structure that goes up the sort of the back of the neck looked really good and sturdy and the bit that goes down onto the chest looked good. The bit that went under the arms looked a bit uncomfortable. Mm, yeah, I was wondering about that. And actually the um the one that uh, we bought that Joe has been wearing, you've actually found it really comfortable, but I've um, I've not been able to wear it, but I think it's because I every time I've tried to wear it, I've been wearing it with a vest top, and it chafes under the arms. Yeah. But Joe always wears it with a t-shirt, and you've had a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah, because the thing that I liked about it at the at the back was how it looks almost like a headrest. Yeah. Like the, the is so wide and so curved. I think the um, thing that appealed to me about it was the fact that it was supporting in two places, but I do worry about things that support under the chin for the speaking purposes of things because but I, I think if it was in the head and also the chin, then it would take some of the pressure off the chin, in theory. Because at the moment, the reason the chin one's hurt is because of the weight of the chin, the weight of the head on the chin. I also think that um, this one does seem to be another immobilizer. As yeah, well. I was. That's the only other thing I was a little bit worried about. I think is with the with it being chin and forehead, it might be a bit sort of restrictive. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. want some level of restriction, but like I think I still need to be able to move if possible because then it's going to keep it flexible. Yeah, with the, the ratchet system that Joe was just talking about, it was a suggestion that actually came from my brother. Uh, he was saying about um, those, uh, the, you know those knee braces that you get if you've had knee surgery and they've got a, a dial that you turn on the mm -hmm. side and it's a ratchet so that the idea is that you turn it in one direction and it'll change the angle. Oh yeah. But then try the other direction locks it. And yeah. So we were looking at like screw, like a lot of, uh, yeah, ratchet screwdrivers, that sort of thing. Um, and then, um, uh, but the idea being something that you know could have a big chunky dial to be able to turn, and that you could, you know, over the course of the day, for example, be able to ratchet the position up mm -hmm. higher and higher, but that it's got the strength that it's not going to fall back on itself. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's that's what we and so we started looking at different ratchet designs. There are a lot of um, 3D printable ones as well, like okay. three other rack systems that people have made um, CAD designs for. That's cool. The, the challenge has been trying to find something that um, could be scaled up to be big enough to make it grabbable um, and yet still be strong enough to hold weight and mm. still be printable. So we've, we've done some looking at we sh could we print things that are almost vertebrae shaped that could be stackable because mm -hmm. then we could run screws through the like the little blade pieces of the vertebrae mm -hmm. and the screws could be set screws that if you want a lot of rigidity then you know that all the screws are in and then as you you know decide that you are stronger and yeah. have more motion you could take some of the screws out that could allow you know different degrees of flexibility that was an idea that we were exploring thinking that um, uh, especially in the beginning where you'd want more support being able to run a rod up through them but then potentially be able to take that out you know afterwards um, and again looking at ways of doing 3d printed pieces but then having metal or you know or wood or whatever mm -hmm. Sit to give it a bit more strength in the, um, especially in the early days where your your know, your strength in your neck is going to be the the lowest yeah. possible. Strength. Yeah. Having my neck this way for probably almost six months in this position, over a year now, getting this way. I'm actually getting used to it and that's really worrying. Um, it's my natural position, it's comfortable, it doesn't hurt at all. It's not good for social things, my social life has taken a real tip. And my confidence has taken a tip because I don't feel like I look like myself. Which is very difficult for things, you know, I'm a single girl and I'm dating and I feel like the photos that I have up on my profile aren't really an accurate portrayal of who I am because they're me before and I know I'll get back to that but actually that's not how I look now. I feel like I'm being deceptive and things that were easy before are definitely harder now in general in life. And I can't help but think my Parkinson's is going to be so much easier when I can get this sorted. Because Parkinson's is hard enough, but having a prolapse disc in your neck is just a whole other heap of fun on top. But it is worrying me that it's become the comfortable position. 
and actually if I raise it up with my hand it doesn't hurt but it's that's the position it should be in it should be comfortable there it shouldn't be comfortable like this and I think my physio is concerned that actually he's surprised that my neck has held this long in this position and that worries me you know what what should it be doing then if it's not holding should it snap should it break should it twist should it weaken more so I'm concerned about what will happen if I can't brace it But I definitely find when I'm walking around the house at the moment and it's unbraced, it feels loose. So I think getting the right brace that I can wear at the right times will really help lift it. But I'm just worried I'm putting too much pressure on this project. And really, my consultants should be doing this. But I, I don't have a net consultant. I was basically sent down the Parkinson's route because I have Parkinson's. I was sent to my Parkinson's consultant who sent me internally to someone who didn't really even bother looking at it. And I got chucked out of the system again back into the Parkinson's route. So I've never really had a proper neck specialist look at it. But I'm starting with a new consultant on the 7th, a new Parkinson's consultant on the 7th. And he wants to rescan it, he wants to have me see a consultant about my neck, which anyone else, if they had a neck problem, would have done. They wouldn't be having to 3D print a neck brace. But I think anything we can make will be probably a thousand times better than what the NHS can give me. No disrespect to the NHS, but it's going to be one size fits all. So I'm still really excited to see what we can do, but I'm also excited to have the care of an expert because I've not really had that so far. And I just want to know that I'm doing the right things. So uh, have a fun day. <laughs> and our print is just finished, so Joe can do it. Go scoop, go scoop. <laughs> All right. Nice to see you guys. Cool. If you nice to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Speak soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.